Hello. Welcome to Matters of Decorum. I'm Scott Corum. This is what matters to me. There's a lot of different things I could be talking about right now. There's a, a million things in role playing and a whole bunch of things I'm doing as far as design and things in world events. But uh, there's one thing in particular that I feel I do need to talk about, uh, especially in events that have happened in the past week. So I'm going to. A little warning. This might get a little emotional, just saying. If you look back at characters that I've created over the past, God, 20 years or more, you'll see a pattern in some of them, whether it's characters that I've played or characters that I've designed for uh, inclusion in products for the Hot Chicks or Victory Lines. There's a history that keeps showing up over and over again. The character was raised in a circus family. Uh, they had parents that were part of a circus, and they were born with a circus, and were raised there. Uh, usually the child of the circus knife thrower or marksman, and at one point in time they took exception with the people who owned the circus, perhaps violently, and used the skills that they gained uh, with the circus to take out the people who owned it and go off on their own in a life of professional violence using their skills. And after paying attention, that is the background of Scaramanga, the villain from the James Bond novel and movie, The Man with the Golden Gun. In the movie, Scaramanga was played by Christopher Lee, and based on how much I have used just that portion of his filmography, you might have some idea of how much of an effect Christopher Lee's work had on my life. I am a huge fan of Hammer horror films. Uh, films made by the, the Hammer Production Company in London. Uh, movies that had a style all their own. Bright red, ridiculously unrealistic, but very cinematic blood. And these incredible sets, of wonderful costumes, and great writing, and all of the masters of horror were in those. I'm not talking about the modern masters of horror. I'm talking about the, the old spine tinglers, Vincent Price, Peter Lorre, Peter Cushing, and Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee is probably best known from that period for his portrayal of Dracula. And it is Christopher Lee's Dracula that formed the foundation of how I see villains. I spend a lot of time working with villains, but there's a test that every villain that I create has to go through, and that is, does it come anywhere near close to measuring up to the amount of menace and style of Christopher Lee's Dracula? Of course, in recent years, Christopher Lee, still known for playing Notable villains, Count Dooku in the Star Wars prequel trilogy, uh, and Saruman in uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit. Both of which was played with this style that he never lost. Oh my lord. Regardless of what you think of the prequels or... Lord of the Rings and Hobbit movies. You know, they've had mixed reviews and mixed reactions. I was fond of them. I didn't think that they were great cinema by any stretch of the imagination, but they were good. And, oh, good Lord, Christopher Lee. Every time he came on screen, you knew he was there. And even if you hadn't read the books. From the moment you met Saruman in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, you knew he was the villain. 
just because of that delivery and that presence. Now, Christopher Lee read the Lord of the Rings trilogy once a year, whether he needed to or not, always. He'd actually met Tolkien. He always thought that he could be the one to play Gandalf, but good Lord, his performance of Saruman was inspirational. Speaking of people that he'd actually met, not only did he meet Ian Fleming, author of the James Bond novels, he was Ian Fleming's cousin. Ian Fleming almost didn't release the rights to make movies of the Bond films uh, because he wanted them to cast Christopher Lee as James Bond. Which even Christopher Lee admitted might not have worked quite so well, but good lord, when they cast him as Scaramanga. The Man with the Golden Gun is one of those Bond films that also received a lot of uh, mixed reviews. For a James Bond film, it was goofy. It had elements in it that didn't generally belong in a James Bond film. You had the mystical reappearance of an old boy southern sheriff and a drop whistle sound effect when you saw one of the best car stunts ever done performed on screen. But everything that Christopher Lee did in that movie was smooth and stylish. Whether it was his car that turned into a jet plane or the five or six devices that he took apart to assemble his golden gun or just the, the background that surrounded the character that he flowed into and filled. A million dollars a shot, one shot, one kill, one golden bullet, and that was it. The fact that his plan was a little bit ridiculous for a Bond villain, yeah, I've seen worse. I've seen way worse. You know, remind me to talk about Goldfinger sometimes. There was a villain who couldn't hold a salt. But, oh my God, uh, the duel with Bond at the end. Roger Moore in his prime as Bond against Christopher Lee as Scaramanga and... The way that they had set it up in the movie and through Lee's portrayal of Scaramanga, that was a fight between equals. If anything, Bond was a little overmatched. For a villain, Christopher Lee had a pretty darn heroic past. When they were filming Lord of the Rings, there is a, a scene that I think it's in the deleted scenes um, for Return of the King where Saruman, you see Saruman get killed. He gets stabbed uh, in the back by worm tongue, I think. And when they were filming the scene, Saruman gets stabbed in the back and he makes this rasping, wheezing sounding, collapses. Peter Jackson, the director, calls cut. And explains to Christopher Lee that when someone is stabbed in the back, they, there's a little bit more of a cry out. They make a little bit more noise than that. And that's what they wanted to capture. And Christopher Lee looked at him and asked him, Mr. Jackson, have you ever heard a man being stabbed in the back? Because I assure you, that is exactly what it sounds like. And then Peter Jackson remembered that Christopher Lee had been one of the founding members of the OSS in World War II. Christopher Lee was goddamn James Bond. When Ian Fleming, who is also responsible for the formation of the OSS, uh, was writing James Bond, he was thinking his cousin, who was actually out there, perhaps finding out what it sounded like when a man gets stabbed in the back a few times. Interesting side note. Uh, the person represented by the character Q in the James Bond films, the person responsible for all of their, uh, their high-tech gadgetry and concealed weapons, that was John Pertwee, otherwise known as the third Doctor Who. 
I want to see that movie. Just saying. Anyway. We lost Christopher Lee this week. At the age of 93. A ripe old age. Um, and a really, really full life. A uh, man who fought for freedom against villainy, mastered the thespian art, because <laughs> between controlling his presence and his height, the man was 6'5", oh my god, and he used that, oh, the presence that he could generate just by leaning a little bit. He's been villains in just about every way that we have seen villains portrayed, and he has defined what it means to have that dark, menacing presence but still to maintain that air of style and grace. When he played Dracula, he never doubted that the beast was just under the cover, just behind the curtain, waiting to come out, barely restrained by the style and the elegance of Dracula, but oh my God, you wanted the beast to not come out. Oh, he made Dracula proper scary, he did. He's wielded lightsabers. He's had battles of, of magic against sorcerers that are beyond what any of us are ever going to see rolling dice. One of my favorite performances by Christopher Lee was when he appeared on Saturday Night Live, of all places, and he got to portray Death, showing up to a little girl's room after her dog had died to explain why he had to take her dog away. And when she became extremely annoying and demanding to know when she was going to die, after trying to restrain himself, losing it just a little bit, and saying, I'll visit you on your 12th birthday. Nope, nope, never mind, sorry, I didn't say it. The man sang heavy metal. He's, he's the oldest man with a heavy metal album. Tallest actor. He's portrayed more villain roles, has more screen time, has more screen credits than just about anyone else ever. The man's a record holder. If I recall correctly, 183 screen credits. When I heard that we'd lost him this week. I'm not usually one who falls apart at the announcement of the passing of a celebrity. I, I feel bad about it. I, I wish we still had these people around. But, you know, people pass on. People do pass on. And you miss them. But I, I had to realize that next time I woke up, I'd be waking up in a world that didn't have Christopher Lee in it. And that affected me. What I did realize, however, is that we will continue to live in a world that has had Christopher Lee in it. He has 183 screen credits. I'm probably going to spend a while tonight watching The Man with the Golden Gun and not going back and watching some of the old Hammer Vampire films. Because there's nothing quite like a really good movie or even a mediocre movie with Christopher Lee in it. Because, damn. There have been a number of people who played great villains of our time, and I don't want to detract from any of them. I love me a good villain. <sighs> James Earl Jones, Hugo Weaving. Hmm. 
but Christopher Lee was probably the first villain who I not only knew the name of the character, but I knew the name of the actor. And this was when I was not very old at all. I have a sense that in the afterlife, Christopher Lee is meeting up with some old friends. Peter Cushing, Peter Lorre, Vincent Price. And if you get the four of those together in the afterlife, how long is it going to be before H.P. Lovecraft is running a game of Call of Cthulhu for them? And, wow, that makes me happy. Also kind of terrified because, you know, that might leak over a little bit and gee someone has to either draw or write that because wow now that I think about that scarier than I thought I'm gonna wander away from that now I am going to miss Christopher Lee I'm going to miss the menace and the danger and the style and the grace and the power that came behind his voice and his expressions we're going to miss the man, but he left behind so much history that I can still spend years just getting to know what he's accomplished. And if you've left behind a legacy like that, you're never really gone. You're just not putting out any new stuff. Well, something a little bit lighter next time, I expect. In the meantime, I'm Scott Corum. This is what matters to me. And I'll see you next time on the next Matters of Decorum.